Hello everyone and welcome to week 14 of English 120. So you guys, we only really have three more weeks of instruction before your last week of class, which is your final. So um, what's going on this week is you are turning in your final, your, um, your constructed graph, uh, draft. Um, that means your paper will be at least eight to 10 pages long, not including your um, works cited and bibliography pages. Okay, so um, most of you have done most of this work already. This should not be a scary endeavor, but you are expected to go back and um, look at the work that you've done um, and uh, make it even better. And that's what we're going to be working on this week. So you'll notice that um, under this week's content, um, you're going to be reading again in the Bedford Researcher. You're going to be reading chapter 17 which is all about um, editing your document um, and revising. Um, and I'll be talking to that a little bit in this lecture. Um, your research draft, and this is, this is supposed to be a very finished draft, you guys. If you don't have eight to, 10 page, eight to 10 pages, you will not receive your credit for the draft. So please know it needs to be finished. Um, once you turn in your draft, you need to sign up for a conference. Um, and we'll be talking about that later in this lecture. Um, it's not listed on here, but you will be expected to sign up for a conference. Conferences are worth 50 points. So it's important that you attend your conference. You come ready with questions for me about um, how to improve your paper. Um, your, uh, the idea behind it is um, I will be um, giving you points on the um, draft you turn in. Um, based on our conference and in that we will be talking about your draft and talking about ways for Finally this week, you will be um, finishing Sonora Babs book whose names are unknown. Um, uh, so please make sure if you're going to make a Zoom chat, please make sure you make this one. Um, it's this Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, we will be discussing um, all of the chapters that we um, talked about. And last week we had a great discussion. Um, and if you haven't already watched it, you'll have to remember that in English 95, your other class with me, um, you are expected to not only do the reading, you're expected to watch the live Zoom class that was recorded and um, make sure that you do the assignment that is posted in English 95. I've stopped cross-referencing these um, assignments because I figure at this point in the semester, you understand how things work. But please don't fall behind in that class as well as it's a separate grade. All right, so let's talk about your research project. We are on week 14. So that means that draft one is due and that we will be conducting conferences. Next week, we will be working on a self-review and peer review. Those will go through week 15 and 16 because we have a limited week um, for Thanksgiving. Um, and then in week 17, your final draft will be due. So just a reminder of your assignment. Um, it's really important to look back at what is expected of you as you finish writing your paper, okay? You wanna make sure number one, that this is an argumentative research paper, okay? That you are arguing something in your paper. Um, your paper must be eight to 10 double spaced pages, uh, that means not including your works cited page or your bibliography. And it needs to be an MLA in proper MLA format. Yes, you will lose points if you do not have completely perfect MLA format at this point. If you have questions about MLA format, see chapter 20 in the Bedford Researcher or come visit me during office hours. Uh, the overall requirement is that you have at least six academic sources you can have more sources if you'd like, but you have to have six that are academic. Um, and they need to be referred to using MLA in-text citations that are listed on a works cited page at the end of your paper. You must also have a bibliography at the end of your paper citing all the work that you used in your research in researching your paper, including what you listed on your works cited page. Your paper must have an introduction where you introduce your topic and you have a focused thesis that clearly states the topic and you are writing about the position that you're arguing about this topic. Um, your paper must contain 
several body paragraphs that include subtopics that are proven with evidence. Your paper must include counter arguments that introduce arguments against the one that you're making in your paper. And then your paper must also have a conclusion where you clearly state how you've proven your thesis and you communicate the purpose of your paper. So just to go over the basic structure, um, your introduction should be approximately two to three paragraphs long. It needs to begin with a hook that grabs the reader. Remember two weeks ago, we went over how to create a hook. If you didn't watch that lecture, you should go back and watch it. I give you a lot of ideas on how to do that. You also need to introduce the history of your topic. Um, what is, you know, what it, what's the history of, of how this topic became a topic, an argumentative, argumentative topic. Um, and you want to frame the argument that you're going to be play, place, you know, putting forward in your paper. Then the most important sentence in your paper, which is usually the last sentence in your introduction, and remember, it is never more than one to two sentences, is your, is your thesis statement. You're going to want to make sure about that by the time you turn in this paper, your thesis statement is so clear and focused that it is absolutely clear what you're arguing in this paper. Then you'll proceed with your body paragraphs. This is five to 10 paragraphs, um, two to three paragraphs per subtopic. And each body paragraph should introduce subtopics, support with evidence from multiple sources. Remember, you need at least two different sources for each subtopic. And then you wanna relate what you've proven in that paragraph or in those paragraphs back to your thesis statement. You definitely want to include counter arguments. Now these can be at the end of your paper before the, your conclusion, or they can be integrated in each of your subtopics, okay? And this is where you state either in a single paragraph or integrated into the body paragraphs um, for each subtopic, the arguments against the one that you're making in your paper. Your conclusion is where you're going to restate all the main points that you've made in your paper. You're going to restate the main um, evidence that you've used to prove your points, and you're gonna end by reinforcing your message and sharing your final thoughts on the topic without an I believe or I feel. You're also gonna use, employ at least one of the strategies that I introduced to you last week on how to close your, your conclusion. You'll need to have a work cited page and that will, where you provide citations for all the sources that you've referred to in your paper. Citations must follow MLA format um, remember, look at chapter 20 um, for more help. Um, I'm also going to go over the sample work cited page um, that is on the Al Purdue website in just a second. And then your bibliography. This is where you provide citations for all of the sources that you used in your research, including the sources that you included in your work cited page. So the difference, remember, between a work cited page and a bibliography is a work cited page is a formatted list of all the sources that you cited within your essay. That's all that you list. A bibliography, on the other hand, is a formatted list of all the sources that you consulted but didn't necessarily cite for a research assignment. And it does not include annotations. This is not an annotated, annotated bibliography. We already turned that in earlier in the semester. I want to make sure before you do this assignment that you really understand it. So um, here's a sample works cited page. You'll notice that um, there is an issue with this because I'm working in PowerPoint. This is you want to make sure you have a hanging indent of 0.5 for the line after. Um, and unfortunately, this is not happening here. OK, um, but here's a, a sample. Um, you've got lots of different types of documents listed here. This is all about um, global warming. Um, and I think it's a great example of what your um, works cited page could look like. So um, you're going to be reading in um, chapter, um, uh, you're going to be reading in the Bed for Researcher, um, the chapter on revising and editing. And I have kind of um, pulled out some of the information I want you to really focus on this week. This week, you're looking at your overall construction, making sure you have all the parts of your paper. Um, and that you're doing the best that you can with that, with all of those parts. Next week for the self-review and the peer reviews, um, you'll be getting an outside um, perspective on your essay and you're gonna be looking at very fine details of your essay. And I'm gonna give you some tools to do that, okay? Um, but please, no matter what you do, run 
spell check before you turn in your paper, read it out loud before you turn in your paper so that you can hear if you're making any mistakes, okay? So as you're revising and editing, you wanna continually revisit the question. Does my, paper, does my writing achieve my purpose of writing an argumentative research paper? Am I arguing something? And how well am I conveying my argument and, to, um, and ideas to my readers, right? Is my thesis clear and focused? Do the argument, um, does the argument and ideas, um, do the argument and ideas help my reader understand and accept my thesis statement, okay? Make sure when you're using sources, you wanna make sure you have adequate support for each of the points you make in your paper. You know you need at least two different sources per subtopic, but you could use more. You could use the same source twice in addition to a second source, right? Depending on what you need to prove your point. Make sure that when you're using those sources that you have completely integrated them. Um, make sure you introduce your quotation with a signal phrase, right? And or an attribution um, that you properly quote and that you cite your source in an in-text citation that directly follows the quotation and also refer back to a citation on the works cited page that is listed in alphabetical order. And most importantly, have you interpreted and contextualized the quotation that you provided to help prove your points? Remember, I did an entire lecture a few weeks ago on how to do this properly. Please, if you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. You also wanna review the structure of your paper. Go through all of this information and make sure that your paper contains it. Okay, next week, as we begin the self-review and peer review process, so week 15, 16 will be a, du a double week that I will post um, next Friday. Um, and because it, oh, it goes over the um, Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and so you'll be assigned to do a peer review and you'll be doing your own self-review through that time, okay? Um, please make sure that you put aside at least an hour and a half for each of these assignments. It's very important that you spend that time on it. Um, for one, if you do not spend that time and fill out the forms properly for your peer review, A, it's letting down your classmates, which you don't want to do. And B, you're not going to get a very good grade. So you don't want that to happen. For the self-review, you're only letting down yourself, right? And you'll also not a good, get a good grade on it. So it's very important that you do so. Finally, this week are our conferences. Um, I will be posting a sign-up page under this week's content with all of the possible times, and I will be updating that as people sign up for slots. So make sure you pay attention to that before you email me. If you can't find a time that works for you, you need to email me right away so that we can set up a different time. I will be flexible, but please try to make the times work if they can for you. Conferences are worth 50 points, so you don't want to miss having one. Beyond that, you will miss the opportunity for me, the person grading your paper, to spend a lot of time with you talking through how to improve it so that you can get a better grade. So I highly recommend it. So just to review, um, this week, you need to watch this lecture, which hopefully you've already done. You need to read chapter 17 in the Bedford Researcher. You need to set up a conference with me you need to write your research draft um, and turn it in by next Friday, um, but you have to have a finished draft for our conference. So if you're somebody that has already completed your draft or you're gonna complete it early in the week, sign up for an early conference, okay? Um, you need to attend Monday night, our final um, talk about um, Sonora Bab and um, the last chance for you to get information for the final which is um, not very far away, away in week 17. So let's make sure that everyone comes to the live Zoom this week. And if not, that you watch the live Zoom. We will be reading chapters 39 to 45 up to page 222, which is the end of the book. So make sure you get that all completed this week. And as always, you guys, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. I'd be happy to help you. Have a great weekend and enjoy. I don't know if it's raining in Napa, but it's raining here in Sonoma County. And that always makes me happy because it means that there might be less fires next year, right? Okay, have a great weekend and I will see you online.